Good morning. This is Kel Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you begin your day. The Sioux Falls SWAT team responded to a neighborhood in the central part of the city over the weekend. Our Kettle Land News crew was on scene as the SWAT team rolled up to an area near 14th and Spring late Saturday night. Officers surrounded an apartment with their guns drawn and called for someone to come out. Police on scene told us that the heavy law enforcement presence is part of a previous investigation but gave no further details. We expect to learn more information at this morning's police briefing, which you can watch right here on Kelloland.com starting at 1030. A mobile home is a total loss after a weekend fire on the Rosebud Reservation. Mission Volunteer Fire and Rescue says crews were called to help the Rosebud Sioux Tribe Volunteer Fire Department battle a fire in St. Francis just before 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon. One person was helped out of the mobile home before firefighters arrived. Crews did go inside to fight the fire, but conditions worsened and they were forced back outside. We're learning new details about funeral arrangements for former U.S. Senator Jim Aberesk, who died Friday on his 92nd birthday. According to his obituary, a private, a private family service will take place, and Aberesk will be buried at Black Hills National Cemetery. A public memorial will be held in Sioux Falls in May. Instead of flowers, the family is asking that memorials be directed to the American Indian College Fund or to the St. Jude Re Children's Research Center Hospital, where Abresk was a board member. He represented South Dakota in the U.S. House from 71 to 73 and served one six-year term in the Senate before retiring from politics in 1979. Meanwhile, former Sioux Falls physician and lawmaker John Jack Billion died Saturday night. His obituary states the 83-year-old passed away with his family by his side at Avera McKinnon Hospital. Billion was an orthopedic surgeon in Sioux Falls for 26 years. In 1992, he was elected as a South Dakota state representative, and in 2006, he ran as a Democratic nominee for governor of South Dakota, but lost to Mike Rounds. Now let's get a check of our morning weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. A foggy start to the day, Scott. Oh, we have thick fog in place. Uh, dense fog advisories in effect to cover eastern South Dakota through um, mid-morning, I guess. Around 10 o'clock, they are set to expire. That will come with some stronger winds as we do work our way into the late morning hours and early this afternoon. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s for highs today. And then we're watching this. The next hit of snow coming in. We'll have an increasing chance to see snow as we go through the day tomorrow. I would say a better chance tomorrow night, maybe lingering into Wednesday in north central and northeastern South Dakota. Brian will have more details on your forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. Online right now, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, her family, friends, and guests are the only people who can stay in a state-owned historic cabin in Custer State Park. It's unclear if the rustic Valhalla retreat is being used for political purposes. Citing open record laws, Noem's administration won't reveal who stayed there over the past three years or whether the state is reimbursed, despite more than $120,000 in taxpayer money being spent on property upgrades. You can read this full story from South Dakota News Watch on Kelloland.com. Rare Disease Day is tomorrow in both Falls Park and the Ark of Dreams in downtown Sioux Falls will be lit to show solidarity with those affected by rare diseases. Sioux Falls 4-year-old Beth Raymond has a rare genetic disease where her body is unable to break down proteins like it's supposed to, which in turn can lead to brain damage. Therefore, her parents must watch her diet very closely and limit how much protein she eats. You know how like your muscles go weak when you get sick and you just you can't stand and you're just really, really weak? For her, her body releases a chemical and that chemical will go to the brain and cause brain damage. It causes a hole in the brain. So her body doesn't get rid of that chemical. It's like a waste product. If you would look at it from the outside, you wouldn't know any difference. The only difference right now is she's got a feeding tube. That's the only thing that you see outside of a normal child. They also say that Beth has been hospitalized 12 different times throughout her short life. The Community Blood Bank is behind by a week's worth of donations after canceling donation drives because of weather. Executive Director Ken Versteeg says they lost over 500 units worth of donations and it'll take time to make up. So we're basically another week behind from where we need to be and there's no real way to catch up unless we actually have volunteers come in um, all next week to give blood. 
You can find a link to the donation schedule under this story on Kelloland.com. The Rapid City Regional Airport has seen more and more passengers. During the month of January, the airport saw over 21,000 enplaned passengers, which is a 35% increase over last year during that time, and an 8% increase over the previous record-breaking number. We are seeing a steady increase, and we're seeing larger planes utilize our gates than ever before, which is another reason why we are looking to the future for expansion um, so that we can accommodate some of these larger jets. Over the next five to ten years, the airport is planning some multi-million dollar expansion projects to accommodate the growth. That is a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? Okay, well, looking at weather today, well, the wind switching to the north, northwest, that will help our cause with scouring out some fog. We think that sunshine should be returning as well. So overall, a lot of parts of Kelloland, not too bad this afternoon if you can handle some of the wind that's definitely ramping up at times. Uh, we do expect tonight temperatures falling back into the teens for several areas of the east. I would say watch radar early tomorrow morning. We'll see if we start picking up some radar returns in northern Nebraska. And then some of that's going to be edging northward through midday. Temperatures are marginally cold enough for snow, not like we're dealing with any frigid air. But we do expect that this system, as it develops over top of us tomorrow night into early Wednesday, folks in the north, we're talking to Mobridge, Gettysburg, Aberdeen, Watertown. Keep watching this because see there's some bands of snow that kind of whip around there as we get into that time frame tomorrow night and early Wednesday. And given the time of year, end of February and early March, you can get some heavy wet snow pretty quickly on a system like this. So we'll be on top of that if there are any uh, watches, warnings, those kind of things. We'll let you know about that. I do think Sioux Falls will get touched by this. Obviously, uh, a push here tomorrow morning or late in the morning, early afternoon. Can we pick up some snow? Yes, uh, probably a nuisance variety type snow. Uh, so we're not going to call this out as anything major in the, at least the southern half of Ketherland. The northern half, north of Highway 14, is where I would kind of start paying closer attention to that with numbers of at least three inches of snow. And on the probability map, which uh, we were kind of posting here, in fact, getting that together online here too at Ketherland.com, and uh, that's running over a 70% chance of three plus in Aberdeen. Okay, so that's why you're going to see some uh, heftier percentages on the chance of snow in that direction. Numbers today, Sioux Falls 38. The showers are wrapping up. The sun is coming back, and I think we've got a pretty good afternoon overall. Tonight, 16 Mitchell Sioux Falls, 18 degrees in Rapid City. Developing pockets of moisture coming up tomorrow from the south. And see those temperatures just marginally cold enough for snow. And I would even argue in some cases we could have a little bit of a rain snow mix here. But uh, again, we'll kind of gear up tomorrow night as the temperatures cool down in the north. And uh, that area from Aberdeen to Mobridge would be one to watch. After we get a brief cool down midweek, we're going to go back to the 30s at the end of the week. So we should get some steady melting. Uh, that's an encouraging story. We like the sounds of that. Aberdeen also back to the 30s at the end of the week, but note the 60% chance of snow developing tomorrow afternoon. 70% chance of snow uh, early Wednesday. Pier probably fits into some of this too, but I would favor north of Pier a little bit more on this one. And after a brief cool down, overall temperatures Friday, Saturday, Sunday, not too bad. Rapid City could be back to the 40s again at the end of the week. Check out more coverage on the weather right here online at Kelloland.com.